$32 every second is what the World Health Organization says physical inactivity costs. That is around $27 billion every single year. 31% of adults, but 80% of adolescents don't meet the physical activity recommendations from the World Health Organization. Those people are at higher risk of things like cardiovascular disease, cancer, diabetes, depression, anxiety, bone and muscle issues, and then for younger people developing cognitive and motor development struggles. But as a sports coach, the science is clear on what we should do to help. Make sport fun. But the problem is that most people believe myths about what fun is in sport. I want to bust three myths about what fun is in sports coaching, 11 fun factors that I found in evidence and actually share the evidence to back it all up. But we all know what fun is, it's just different for everyone, right? Well, not according to fun researchers or researchers researching fun. They looked at 81 determinants of fun inside of sport and they found 11 tenants that were consistent across everyone. This suggests most, if not all people, look for the same things. With fun being the biggest reason people leave sport, I don't know about you, but I want to try and make sport as fun as possible whilst also keeping it useful. But that is actually the first myth, or misunderstanding at least, of what fun is in sport. I used to think fun was a reward, something you give out after trying hard. Fun as more goofing or falling around. Fun not necessarily paying attention or staying on task, being a little bit carefree. But Olympians say fun is why they got into sport, but also why they pursued the sport. Fun practice design helping them improve to get high performance results in the Olympics. But everyone is different, right? Well, let's start with the boys and girls research. Of the 81 determinants the researchers picked for fun inside of sport, the boys picked 11. 11 fun factors. 3 high priority, 6 medium priority, and 2 low priority. But then they ask girls the exact same question. The same 81 determinants, and the girls picked exactly the same 11 factors. The same 3 high priority, 6 medium priority, and 2 low priority. In fact, 93% of the 81 determinants were exactly the same between the boys and the girls. Not quite what I was expecting. Testing under 9s and under 13s representing a younger age group and under 14s to under 19s representing an older age group, they did the exact same test with the 81 determinants. And guess what? The same results. The same 11 fun factors. Same 3 high priority, same 6 medium priority, same 2 low priority. But surely there is a difference between participation and performance. There was, but they picked the same 11 fun factors. I used to split these groups up, recreation for fun, competition for advancement, and the involvement in one implies the absence to the other. So recreation focusing on fun more than advancement, and competition focusing on advancement more than fun. But that isn't what this research suggests. Now there were five determinants that were different between the participation and the performance, as you would sort of expect. Practicing with specialized coaches, going to sports camps, staying in hotels for competition, traveling to places to play, and playing in tournaments. But again, 94% of the 81 determinants were the same for participation and performance individuals. The same 11 fun factors were consistent between those categories that we would normally put participants in. Fun doesn't seem to be as different for everyone as we might have thought. At 11 was swag. High quality gear, equipment, and just nice uniforms. I imagine something that makes people feel included in a community. At 10 was team rituals. Team spirit, high fives, just generally good vibes between different people and different participants. But they were the two lower priority fun factors. At 9 was game time support. Consistent officiating. I'm looking at all the, the referees and judges out there, but also the parents as well. Consistent help from those individuals, but what that looks like I think is going to be a longer conversation. Although I think we can recognise what supportive parents and carers look like. Maybe? Then at 8 was mental bonuses. Positive attitude towards participation and engagement, but also winning whatever winning looks like in that context. Again, a topic for a longer conversation. Then at seven was team friendships, feeling part of a team, making friends within the team. 
Now, coaching trampoline, it is an individual sport. So what I try and do inside of the sessions is include individuals together. So they're training in training groups. There are loads of different challenges to build up this team friendships from different age groups, different individuals with different needs, different wants, and different schools, different environments. There are lots of different challenges to get people working together, not just in sport, but in life. But feeling part of a team is obviously important. At six was practice. Well-organized, varied sessions. Participants shouldn't be waiting for instructions or setup or what the focus of the session is going to be to give them a direction. But then if a session is really well organized because they've done the same thing four, five, six weeks in a row, that's also not ideal. Both or either of these things can reduce the phenometer, <laughs> phonometer, I don't know, at five was games. Now I know drills and practice and games are sort of interchanged when we're talking about practice design in sports coaching, but this fun factor is referring to time and then even teams. I personally would adjust the even teams bit to even challenge because individual sport. But I think the point here is play the game they came to play. And then the last medium priority at four was learning and improving. Participation and performance individuals both wanting challenge. Boys and girls, young and old, all wanting to be challenged to learn and improve. Which brings us to the top three fun factors. And at three was positive coaching, encouraging engagement, giving it a go, but then also knowing the sport, and most importantly to me, encouraging or at least allowing mistakes. I think allowing mistakes and fun factor four, learning and improving tie in quite well together. And before my degree, I wouldn't have thought that making mistakes was part of what makes sport fun, but that is what the research shows and what I've learned through my experience coaching over the last decade. Fun isn't a set of making silly games up. Fun is making mistakes and learning from them. At two was positive team dynamics. Now again, I think this could be tied in with some other fun factors. Fun factor seven, team friendships, and fun factor 10 with team rituals. But seven has a focus on team friendships, and 10 has a focus on like high fives and just good generalized spirit, whereas team dynamics is everything, everyone included together, more of a culture, I guess you could say? And some of the biggest lessons I've learned from researching, reading the Miss Sports Coaching book is, yes, the 11 fun factors and participation and performance are both looking for advancement, but also that fun is fostered. Fun is fostered with intent. It is deliberately created. We as coaches, parents, spectators, participants, officials, all create a culture of fun creating the environment of fun. Which brings us to the biggest number one fun factor, which is trying hard. Every single person wants to try hard and do their best, whatever best looks like for them. Being from a more active part of the UK, being from a more active ethnic group and more active age group, I don't fully understand all of the barriers to sport, but being half deaf and half blind, I do have my own challenges and have gone through and adapted to a lot of the challenges that I faced. And I do still hit the World Health Organization recommendations for me, at least, over two and a half hours of moderate activity every week, and then over one and a quarter hours of vigorous activity every week. Although the measure of moderate and vigorous activity could be made a little bit easier. Moderate intensity physical activity is usually a five or six on a scale of zero to ten. Vigorous intensity physical activity is usually a 7 or 8 on a scale of 0 to 10. But then they also use METs, which is a whole other conversation. All I know is I try my hardest in the activities I can do and that I find fun. Although fun activities aren't always active. You could call me a try-hard researcher for doing a two-hour video essay on ecological psychology and that took well over 30 hours of me sitting down. I am proud of that video, but it certainly wasn't the most active two weeks of my life. But that is where actually being in a fun community, fun environment kept me moving, kept me active during the, the, the weeks of research. I'm trying hard to develop as a, as a coach, yes, taking an ecological approach, which requires theory and practice. And these 11 fun factors bleed into all of the sports coaching literature, especially when taking an ecological approach. So if you want to hear more about my coaching journey or learn about ecological psychology, you can click on this video over here or subscribe in front of my face.